All right, let's look at the second FRQ of the 2025 AP Physics e and M FRQs. So we have a rotating circular conducting loop of area A and resistance R as an external uniform magnetic field directed in the negative Z direction. So that's coming out of or uh, into the page because out of the page is the positive Z direction by this dot here. Okay, at time t equals zero, the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane on the loop as shown in figure one. The loop is rotating with this constant angular speed and it's rotating around the y-axis it looks like. So it's kind of like we're gonna be changing the amount of flux going through the loop. About the dashed lines along the diameter of the loop, the value of the magnetic flux is given by this. So they're giving you the flux expression. Uh, the absolute value of the induced EMF is epsilon. The partially completed bar shows the bar represents at epsilon three quarters of t, where three, uh, t is the period. Right, draw bars represent epsilon at time zero, one quarter t, one half t relative to this. So this is gonna be a kind of a sinusoidal because how do we get the induced EMF is we're going to take the derivative, we're gonna take the rate of change of the flux. And I, notice I don't put the negative sign because I just care about the magnitude of the EMF at this point. I don't really care about which way it's going because we use Lenz's law to do that anyway. So we're gonna take the derivative of this expression. Well, the magnetic field and the area are actually constant. It's the it's the, the it's it's how much the area is oriented with the uh, with the with the magnetic field. That's what this part encapsulates. So the BA is the same. The derivative of cosine is negative omega sine of omega t, and you get that negative sign. You get that omega because of chain rule, right? It pops out there. So this becomes negative BA omega sine of omega t. And again, I don't care really about this negative sign because I just care about the absolute value of this. So really the magnitude is just gonna be B A omega sine of omega T. Now, if you look at this expression, okay, so they're saying at, at T is, if you look at like what's happening here, this is gonna be the maximum. This is the max EMF, okay? And that occurs at, you know, like at, at specific points in here. Now, where is the rate of change? Like the induced EMF is maximum when we're changing it the most. So let me see, they're giving it by here. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out. So they're, they're saying at three quarters of the period, the period by the way is right, two pi over omega. So let me think about, so I think at t equals zero, you should have the least amount of induced EMF because the area is changing the most, like right at this point here. So it's gonna be zero. Um, the maximum you have is that when you're at half a period here, um, so like you can write this as B A omega sine, um, let's see, two pi over T times little t, right? Like if you solve for omega here and plug that into there. So when you're at zero, this is gonna be zero. When you're at pi over two, or sorry, when you're at half a period, when you're at quarter of a period, um, let me just think about this. I guess I just have to think about the shape of a sine curve. You can plot this on Desmos if you wanted to, but you're going to be zero here. This is at a period. This is at half a period, and this is at a quarter of a period. So at a quarter of a period, and you can plug in a number. If you plug in a quarter of a period, you get pi over two, sine of pi over two is maximum. So at a quarter of a period and three quarters of a period, they're both at the maximums here and here. And again, don't don't worry about one's positive, one's negative. We just care about the absolute value. So that's why it doesn't have a negative axis. And then at half a period, we should be back down to zero again. Okay, because now it's flipped 180 degrees at this point. So that's what that graph should look like. All right, derive an expression for the maximum induced current in the loop in terms of B, A, R, B, omega physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing it. So we'll start with this. This will be our derivation to begin with. That will be the magnitude of the, and you can use omega. So we don't, we can leave it as omega here. And so the, yeah, this is the max. So the max, cause they want the maximum induced current. So the max EMF, the max voltage is equal to B A omega. That's what we derived here from here. And then um, ultimately we just want to figure out the the current, the current being the voltage divided by the resistance of the loop. Is that all they told us? They give us the resistance, area A and resistance R. Okay, so that's gonna just be B A omega over R like that.
Okay, and that will be no other variables. Okay, cool. On the axis, sketch a graph of the instantaneous power dissipated by the loop as a function of i during the interval. So um, the power in the circuit is just going to be i times omega. So you're going to do the current here, b a omega over r. Oh, the b, sorry, the i. This is the i max. This is not i. Um, i max is going to be this times sine of omega t, right? Sorry, what I'm doing here is just doing P is equal to I times V. And then the voltage is, you can either do I squared R or you can just multiply by the voltage, which would just be, be another B A omega sine of omega T. And uh, you're just gonna square this B squared, A squared, omega squared over R sine squared of omega T. So what does a sine squared function look like? If you graph it on Desmos, you'll find a sine squared. What, so when this is zero, we're gonna have zero power because we're gonna have no EMF, right? So therefore, there's gonna be no current. So those will be zero and zero at those points there. And that, that's reflected in what we think here is that at half a T, it's gonna be zero EMF. And then you're gonna have your peak power. Let's see, you just need to sketch it. So you don't need, they didn't say to label the axis, so you don't need to label the axis. But a sine squared curve is going to ultimately have peaks here. And so it's gonna look a bit like this. Sine squared curve is just this, another sine curve that just uh, is, has a vertical shift and stays positive. So that would be the shape of the power as a function of time. Uh, indicate whether the sketch you drew in part C is or is not consistent with the bars that you drew in part A. Briefly justify your answer by referencing functional dependence between power and epsilon. Okay, so this is what we're talking about before was that when the epsilon is zero, the power should be zero. If there's no potential difference, then there's no power. And you can see that at those points at zero and one half T, the power is zero. And so you would just say like, it's consistent because the power is equal to zero when epsilon is zero at the times zero and one half T, right? And the power is max when epsilon is max at t is equal to uh, one quarter t and three quarters of a t.